Shut up and sit down. After 25 years, Darwin is like catching up with someone I used to know as a teenager and now finding them all growing up. The physical size of the place is the same, but it's really filled out. It's literally doubled in population from the 80,000 who lived here with me in the 90s. Things are pretty much the same place as they all were when I left. The Darwin Sailing Club has a great sunset and reasonable food. The Northern Territory University has changed its name to the Charles Darwin University. There are more shopping centres and the F-35s are now taken off from Darwin Airport. About the only real change are those very Darwin elevated houses on stilts. They've all been knocked down and replaced with modern air conditioned apartments that you'd find anywhere else. Darwin has grown up from an outback frontier town to a metropolitan capital. This place really reminds me of Brisbane. There are many more touristy things here now. For example, the new waterfront man-made beach. I remember that they would constantly find crocodiles in Lake Alexandria and that spooked both me and many visitors from swimming there. But now the locals seem to have lost their fear of the water and are happy to paddle in the shallows. There's now a coastal bike ride that stretches from Casarena Beach all the way to the CBD. I remember those times walking home from school across the same bridge, walking past the same foreshore pool at Nightcliff and to the old apartment. In a time of mobile phones, it was good to finally get a picture of all those faded memories. There are now many speed cameras here in Darwin, and like Brisbane, the traffic moves below the speed limit to avoid the fines. Also like the Gold Coast, very few people wear helmets while riding the bike, and barely nobody respects the 20 km speed limit on the shared bikeways. I thought that Tennant Creek had social problems that prompted the widespread use of those police cameras, but they're right throughout Darwin as well. And like Tennant Creek, the Darwinites all live hidden behind six foot fences, although missing the barbed wire. When I used to live here, the locals weren't as concerned with petty theft as they are here today, to the point that they've locked up the deodorant. I can't explain the change. I don't want to blame the indigenous people as they've always been here, and the same problems are still here today as they were back then. And honestly, I'm not seeing the crime that the locals are scared of. But I am seeing the fear and mistrust of strangers, and I'm starting to believe that the Northern Territory has become a paranoid authoritarian police state. It was a 1,000 kilometre stretch from the Tennant Creek to Darwin. I assume that with the sun setting at 7, then the sun would also rise at 5, aka middle day was in the middle of the day. But no, although the NT doesn't have daylight saving time, they seem to have shifted the time zone to be closer to the east coast. I managed to get out of bed by 5 and leaving the service station close enough not to need my ID. I set out on the Stewart Highway in the shivering cold with only the faintest glow of the sun in the east. It w I was really questioning the decision to wear summer gear, as riding for over an hour through the valleys in the red centre is still very cold this time of year. Then suddenly the sun started to appear. With watching the sun set for over an hour, the sun rise just jumped straight up and I had to quickly pull over to the side of the road to get an image of it. I arrived at Elliot, where the caravan park triples up as a petrol station slash post office. Being so cold, I was looking forward to a hot pie and coffee for breakfast, but they don't sell hot coffee out here. I think it was once more an interesting place, but now many of the shops were shut. Without much to hang around for, I was straight off for the next fuel stop at Mataranka. I didn't plan the fuel stops terribly well, as it was about a 320 km stretch and I had to reduce the top speed to prevent running out of fuel before getting there. Mataranka was like returning to civilization, with multiple service stations to choose from and many people out and about. There was a natural pool and a large termite mound. I could have stayed a little longer to have a look around, but lunch with at Catherine was only an hour away. Making Catherine just before one, I managed to find the worst Singaporean noodles in all of Australia. Catherine really did remind me of the old Darwin. It's a really dry and spread out place with little else to do than to go for a run. Heading off shortly after, I found myself in Pine Creek for the last fuel stop of the day. I regret not drinking more water here, as the road really did start to heat up as I got closer to the coast and the 900 kilometres really started to take its toll. I managed to arrive in Darwin just about 4.30 with a couple of hours of daylight to spare. I had a quick look around before soaking in the fact that I actually made it here. Making it back to the Airbnb network, I'm staying in a modern air conditioned house close to the university and shopping centre. They have a young child that they keep at the far side of the house and I remain in my room. There's no kitchenette and I'm living from the kettle, fridge, microwave oven and the water from the bathroom. Besides that, it's a great time of year to visit Darwin. 
the nighttime temperatures are dropping below 20 degrees and I really shouldn't be complaining too much. But this was the first time in my life I had to use a laundromat and I didn't know which machine to use and at what setting. All my clothes went furry and my jeans didn't dry properly. The additional positive out of the experience was the interesting people you get to meet while watching your clothes go around. Riding over 2,500 kilometres on flat boring roads since the last mountain ranges at the Atherton Tablelands, the rear tyre is wearing a flat spot. I don't know if this flattening is caused by low tyre pressure as the service stations coming up from Tennant Creek didn't have air or just staying upright while travelling over 100 kilometres per hour. I never have experienced this problem before and I'm hoping that the tyres have at least 5,000 kilometres in them to get me all the way to Perth. I booked a bike in for a service at Broome as I wasn't able to do in Darwin. There's a lot of motorcycles up here and little bike shops to handle the load. I managed to install the new Navman dashcam bike cameras. They seem to be working but I'm not familiar with them and I guess we'll see how they work out. I had to destroy the old ones so if they don't work then I guess we're going to be without bike cameras for the rest of the trip. They're waterproof and require a small screwdriver to get the memory card out so I don't know how awkward it's going to be to get some good images. Other than those images, it's more nerves about the bike and I'm still expecting it to get me all the way home. Back in big city NBN and Vodafone, the internet is a bit sketchy up here and the laptop is working but it's now telling me I don't have a plan. The phone is on the same plan but seems to be alright. The Wi-Fi is dropping in and out as the packets of strange sizes seem to get dropped and it makes the main main lookups very unreliable. Darwin is the sort of place where the bar is very low. It has over doubled the population across harbour but it will be more trusting of the medical advice down there. It's a frontier place like Mount Isa where the people are here to make a quick buck before heading back to a major town. But going tropo in Darwin is very different from the other tropical cities I've visited in the east coast. Many of the people here settle in for the long term before executing their escape plans. It is a safer place than the police cameras suggest as most women look to be willing to move about on their own, seemingly without fear of being harassed. Oh well, I should just be thankful that I'm out of the cold and the rain and in the never-ending sunshine of the Darwin dry season. On the one side, I was expecting more of an emotional roller coaster ride dealing with the old memories and wasted opportunities of when I first lived here. But blocking them all out also meant blocking out the good memories too, and many of the good people I was happy to call friends. It was good digging up those happy memories even though I had purposely buried the more painful ones. On the one hand, I don't think I've ever met someone who wouldn't go take the opportunity to go back in time and correct some of their mistakes. But for me, I obviously needed to learn some lessons the hard way. And on the other side, I now realise that I missed many of those opportunities simply because I didn't understand and chose to run away and hide rather than making a mistake. The real cause of the problem was not being taught as a child how this world truly worked and it's taken me this long to learn on my own. I don't think I'd naturally come back to Darwin if it wasn't for this harebrained adventure to Lap Australia, but I'm happy it's forced me to deal with the past and it's given me the opportunity to take those photographs that I missed as a teenager. It's allowed me to refresh those memories of this place and understand the misjudgments I made in my younger years. So thanks for following my adventures around Australia Remember to go out there and do something to enjoy your day.